Okay, next up, uh, Holly Fowler. If you are familiar with the Tech Council, then you may already know Holly as our executive assistant. What you may not know is that her first name is really Holland, she loves grant writing, and she is available for freelance grant work through Holland Fowler Grant Consulting, LLC. Holly holds a master's degree in nonprofit management and a bachelor's degree in biology, a unique combination that reflects her shared interest in the environment, community engagement, and the areas where those two worlds intersect. Lately, Holly's passion for nature and the outdoors has translated into a passion for sustainable food and gardening. So please welcome Holly or Holland as she enlightens us with confessions of a wannabe homesteader. Welcome, Holly. I'll let the mic there if you want it. You can. I'll start it as soon as I'm done. Okay. All right. When you heard homesteader, I bet at least some of you pictured this. Rugged landscapes, wild independence. Now, I do have a romanticized notion of living off the land, but I hate the cold. So I was glad to find that modern homesteading has a broad definition. Most any attempt at self-sufficient living and growing your own food can be considered an act of homesteading and it can be accomplished in any yard. This is great news because I have no intention of moving to remote Alaska, but I am drawn to this lifestyle. Why, you ask? Last year, several things caught my attention and changed the way I think about food. In case you missed the billboards, 40% of food in America is wasted. Nearly half of food is wasted. This makes no sense. I also began to take constant notice of the lack of locally grown food in grocery stores. I was blown away to find mostly apples from New Zealand and Washington during our local apple season. And then I read this book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, that shredded any last bit of hope I had for our modern food system. Alongside the grocery store madness is the equally strange way Americans spend so much time and money on ornamental yards. Did you know the most irrigated crop in America is lawns? This does not make sense. We can't eat grass and yards have so much more potential. I'm lucky to have over an acre of land. The problem is we spend so much time maintaining the yard with nothing really to show for it. If I can turn some of this into edible landscaping, at least some of that work will translate into things we can eat. This idea of edible landscaping makes perfect sense to me. We use our time and resources more wisely, and our reward is nutritious, inexpensive food. It doesn't even have to mean that your yard is ugly. These blueberry plants are just as beautiful as many other shrubs, but they also give us food. And so it was decided, we're homesteaders now, we're gonna grow everything we eat. I pictured my yard looking a little something like this where everything is edible. Never mind that this food forest took at least 10 years to mature. <laughs> Reality set in and lesson one, I'd better focus on growing my patients first and foremost. I researched and tried out all kinds of new techniques, compost, lasagna gardening, green mulch, I didn't want to use pesticides, but I also totally neglected to look into organic methods of pest control. Lesson two, lots of critters also want to eat our edible landscaping. <laughs> Plan accordingly and take action before the leaves are covered in holes. Lesson three, real homesteaders do not go to the beach for 10 days during growing season. <laughs> we returned to find everything was miraculously alive, but very stunted and totally overgrown with weeds. We'll be taking shorter trips next summer. My ongoing research also taught me that any self-respecting homestead needs some kind of livestock, not just for protein, but also to provide nutrients for compost. Since I have two young kids and an old dog, I'm currently unwilling to try to keep anything else alive, so I outsourced livestock. I don't need to raise my own animals because we buy eggs and meat from our neighbor's farm. And as for the compost, in a neighborly act that can only be appreciated in certain circles, they dropped off a giant load of manure on our front lawn. <laughs> Lesson four, there's no shame in asking for help and working together. This is when I first started to realize that self-sufficiency wasn't really my motivation. Healthy, sustainable, local food is the goal. We're so lucky to live in an area with thriving agriculture and easy access to farmer's markets. So I'll continue to grow what I can, but the pressure's off to do it all. Despite my gardening woes, we do have some successes. This is Sugar Baby, the watermelon. She is quite possibly the slowest growing and most checked on melon in history. <laughs> my daughters have a new respect for where produce really comes from. We grew green beans and peppers and lettuce that did replace some of what we would normally buy. 
Most of what we ate came from other local farms this summer, but it still felt great to be headed in the right direction. When I would get discouraged, I'd let my kids' excitement over each harvest change my perspective. The most important lesson I've learned is that this is a long haul endeavor and it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Every tomato counts. Every single tomato we grow is one important step toward providing nourishing food for my family and reducing my environmental impact. Every tomato purchased from the farmer's market is one more dollar that stays local, one less tomato that has made a cross-country trek. Just like raindrops build up to make puddles and eventually floods, every small food decision can add up to healthier lifestyles, a healthier environment, and a thriving local small business economy. So I challenge you to make one small change. If you can, grow some food. Take the time to visit the farmer's market, join a CSA, or get a local turkey this Thanksgiving. I'll leave you with this final thought from Michael Pollan, author of Omnivore's Dilemma. He says, the wonderful thing about food is you get three votes a day. Every one of them has the potential to change the world. <laughs>